Hi, I'm Julie. I'm a music teacher currently teaching piano and voice in a studio setting. My goal in creating these videos is to bridge the gap for my students in between their lessons. Since I only see them once a week for musical instruction, I'm trying to come up with ways to give them more instruction outside of their lessons. Some of the topics I hope to cover will help them with everything from improvising, to playing lead sheet confidently, to practice tips, even to helping them get over the fear of playing in front of other people. If you're joining me for the first time, make sure to check out last week's video on improv. It will go through a few basic steps on walking you through playing a simple improv duet with me. So let's jump into today's topic. The one song every pianist should know. Think you guessed it? For Elise. Chopsticks. Heart and soul. The answer is no, no, and no. Ready for the real answer? Happy birthday. We all know someone who's had a birthday. Chances are there's someone in your family or in your circle of friends who has a birthday coming up. At some point, someone is going to discover your secret, that you play piano, and they're going to ask you to play Happy Birthday. I want you to be ready to wow them, not just to play it, but to wow them. So for today's lesson, we're going to briefly go through the melody of Happy Birthday, briefly touch on the chord structure of the song, and then we're going to style it five different ways. The styling, that's where the wow is going to come in. For the purposes of today's song, we're going to play it in the key of C. Now obviously you can play this in any key you want, but if you choose to play it in the key of G or in the key of A flat, with me it's going to sound terrible because I'm playing in the key of C. Basically that just means that every note you play needs to be a white key. So avoid all black keys and play white keys for this song. It also means that the song is going to end on a C and it means that your chord structure is going to be centered around since the focus of this video is styling the song and not just learning the song, I'm really not going to spend a lot of time on the basic chord structure or on the melody itself. If you would like to figure out the melody by ear, which just means you mess around on the keys until you find what sounds correct, you're welcome to do that. I would suggest pausing the video right here, figuring it out by ear, and then coming back to the video when you think you have it. I'll give you a hint if that's what you want to do. The melody starts on a G, and then it ends on the C above middle C. If you're more comfortable reading the melody, I've added musical notation right here. We're not going to necessarily focus um, on exactly the rhythm of the song. If you're really good at music, you're going to say that I'm playing it incorrectly. That's fine. We're going to play it the way we hear it and not necessarily the way that it's written. It's written with a straight eighth note but nobody sings it that way. So we're actually gonna play it the way we hear it sung with um, a long, short rhythm on the eighth notes, which is how everyone sings it. So that's how we're gonna play it. We're not gonna force it to be other than what our ear tells us is correct. So the basic melody, starting on a G above middle C, you're welcome to play this with whatever fingering is comfortable, comfortable to you because that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to get past this stuff and get to the styling, stylizing of it. You're welcome to even play it with one finger if you want. If you are more comfortable with that, go for it. Just one finger all over the place or whatever fingering is comfortable to you. So quickly to go through the melody. There you have it. Now we could quickly stylize even just that melody before we've added chords to it. You can play that in any octave you want. You could play it all the way up here in the whistle range for your dog. You could play it in the basement. You could even mix up some of those octaves and play each phrase in a different octave, something like this. Kind of whatever you want. 
When we actually get into stylizing the song, we're going to stay right around uh, the middle C to treble C in, the, in those two octaves. Take a moment, get comfortable with just the melody. You want to be as comfortable as possible with the melody before you start adding something else to it. The something else that we're adding next is just chords. So pause the video here, take a minute, get comfortable with the melody. So I'm assuming at this point you're very comfortable with the melody and ready to tackle some chords. Like most popular songs, this song can be reduced down to just three chords. The C chord, which would be the name of the key that we're playing in. An F chord, which would be four notes away from the C. And then a G chord, which would be five notes away from a C. If you've ever heard someone refer to a song as having a one, four, five, chord progression, this, that's basically what they're referring to. In this song it would be a C, an F, and a G. The C would be the one chord of the song, the F would be the four chord, and the G would be a five chord. We are going to play this in root position, which, me, which means that the name of the chord is going to be the lowest note that we play in the chord. So for the C chord, the C needs to be at the bottom. So for us that would be our pinky. And then you're going to play a skip and a skip. There is your root position C chord. And then F, you'd play your pinky, a skip, and a skip. There's your root position F chord. And then G, there's your pinky, then a skip, and a skip, there's your G chord. And when I say a skip, I just mean you're skipping one key each time. And that's how you build your chord. So C chord, F chord, G chord. You're gonna wanna be comfortable with these. Most of our styling is gonna come from changing something about our chords. Take a minute to jump around all over the keyboard, getting comfortable with this C chord, F chord, and G chord. You're going to want to do it in your left hand, because that's where our melody, that's where our chords are going to be played. Our right hand's taking care of the melody. So you can move all over the bass of the piano, getting these chords played. Take a minute to do that. Okay, I'm assuming that you're comfortable now with your three chords in root position the C chord, the F chord, and the G chord. Now we're going to put them in what's called a progression, a chord progression. That just means that we're going to put those three chords in a very specific pattern, and that pattern is going to complement the melody and the notes that are in the melody. Our chord progression is going to be C, then G, back to C, then F, back to C, G, and then we'll end on C. If you noticed, every other chord goes back to a C chord, which is kind of convenient since our song is in the key of C. So again, that's going to be C, G, C, F, C, G, and end on C. Since that is our chord progression, that is the pattern our chords are going to go through the whole song, that's the next thing that you want to get comfortable with. I know I said the focus of this video practice was on stylizing, but you can't stylize something you're not comfortable with yet. So make sure before you move any farther in this video that you're comfortable first with your melody in your right hand. You're comfortable with the chords in a root position, and now you're comfortable moving between those chords in this specific chord progression. C, G, C, F, C, G, and F. Now it's time to put all of that together. So the melody in the right hand, your chord progression in the left hand, it would go like this. C, G, G, which is just the same one. C, F, C, G, C. Now you could stop right there and you will have accomplished something great because you hadn't played happy birthday before and now the next time someone has a birthday you can be called upon and trusted to confidently play happy birthday for them. Or you could spend a few minutes getting comfortable with just this and getting ready to move on to stylizing it in a more creative way. So spend a little time feeling comfortable putting the melody with the chord progression. Melody in the right hand, 
chord progression in your left hand. And you're not doing anything to the chords in the left hand other than just holding them. Again, C. ready for some fun. All right, here is our first stylizing. This version is for the classy people in your life. We are going to do a birthday waltz. Happy birthday is in 3-4 time. That means that there are three beats in the measure, which naturally is very convenient for a waltz because a waltz has three beats in every measure. Instead of playing our chords blocked, playing all three notes at the same time, which is how we just did it, we're going to break them up into a waltz pattern. That means you're going to play your lowest note by itself, and then you're going to play your top two notes together twice. So it's going to be bottom, the two top, twice, the bottom, two top, twice. So here's your waltz pattern. When I was taking piano in college, what got it stuck in my head was my professor saying, Day, I cannot hear a waltz without hearing boom ching ching. I believe him. But it's stuck in my head. I have the pattern and I have the feel. So go through your progression right now and just do that waltz pattern for all of the note for all of the chords in the progression. So go through your progression using that waltz pattern. C. And you'd stay on C until you change to your next chord. G. Stay there, C, move to F, and then there's like a pause, that's where we put in their name and hold it out forever, and then back to C, G, C. Now the last three note, the, the last three chords in the progression get a little confusing there's not time to get a full waltz pattern going on each chord as you end out the progression after you've sung their name. So you would have happy birthday. Happy C chord, sorry, happy C chord, G, C. So the G at the end and the C, you would just hold them like a regular blocked chord. So to put that together with the right hand playing the melody and the left hand playing a waltz pattern, we're going to start the waltz pattern before we start the melody. We'll do a full boom, chink, chink, boom, chink, and then you come in with your melody. So to put it together, it would sound like this. Hold. And then it changes at the end. Remember, you don't have time to get that full waltz pattern in there. So that's for the classy people in your life. All right, one stylizing down. Here's the second one. This one is for the person in your life who's always on the go, always moving, always going. This one is called a walking bass. Instead of keeping our chord blocked, like we have been doing, where you play all three notes at the same time, or playing the bottom note and then blocking the top two, we're separating all of them out. Everyone is going to be played individually. So for the C chord, you'd play C, E, G. For the F chord, you'd play F, A, C. And then your G chord would be G, E, D. So in, in context with your progression, you would have C chord all split apart, then a G chord all split apart, C again. You're just going to hold the F because there's not enough time to do a whole lot with it. Back to the C. You don't have to worry about changing to the G here because you're playing a G from the C chord and then end on C. So the title is Walking Bass, and though we're playing in the bass clef, let's make it slightly more creative by really putting it into the bass down here. We've moved it to a lower octave for extra creativity. Here we go with the Walking Bass.
remember at the end, you don't have to worry about changing to the G chord because your walking bass C chord lands on the G note where you, where you change to the G chord. So at the end you have happy birthday. How'd you do on the walking bass? Two down, three to go. Here's the third one, one of my favorites. Happy birthday, as we said, is in three, four time, usually. But for this stylizing, we're gonna actually force it into four, four time. We need one extra beat every measure to put a little extra creativity into something. This is called the boogie bass. So far, we have messed around with playing blocked chords. We've changed them up into a waltz style. We've broken them all up so that they're walking around and put it lower in the bass. We are gonna stay in that lower bass uh, range, but we're gonna drop a note out of our chord. You don't have to have all three notes in the chord for it to be that chord. We're gonna keep the bottom note of our chord and we're gonna keep the top note of our chord. So for a C chord, we're gonna keep just the C and the G. For the F chord, we're only going to have the F and the C. And for the G chord, we'll only have the G and the D. So you're having the lowest note of your chord and the highest note of your chord. But we're not done there. We're going to do one more thing to it. And you can do this. You can totally handle this. We're going to go back and forth between playing the chord the way that it's written with the bottom note and the top note. And then every other time we play the chord, we're going to pop our thumb up to one note higher than it usually is at. So if we're playing a C chord, the second time we play the C chord, we're going to play a C and an A. And we're going to go back and forth between C, G, C, A. Hear that buggy bass? So on an F chord, we'd go back and forth. We have the F and the C. That's the usual outline of the bass chord that we have. But we're going to go back and forth between that and adding the D above it. G chord, we'd go between the G and the D, to the G and E. And remember, we've changed up the time signature, so now we have four beats in a measure, so for every measure, we can go back and forth between them twice. So now it's time to put that boogie bass with the melody. As you have probably figured out from the last two stylizing, when you get to the last two, part, two measures of the song, that last C, G, C chord progression, the stylizing changes slightly because there's not usually room to do as much as you have been doing because the chords change faster at the end of the song. Same thing's gonna happen with this one. So we're gonna start with our boogie bass before the right hand comes in. Listen to it a minute because it's going to feel slightly different because the time signature has changed on us. We have that extra beat every measure. So here we go with the C chord. You want another shot at that? The boogie bass can be a little challenging. Here we go. C. G. C. F. C. C. All right, three down, two to go. We're still going to be building on what we've just done with that boogie bass and with keeping it in 4-4 time. So far, everything that we have done in stylizing our song has been in the left hand. We've played the chords blocked, we've played them in a waltz style, we've played them broken in a walking bass, and then we did this boogie bass thing to it. We're keeping the boogie bass, but this styling, we're gonna do something with the right hand. We're gonna syncopate our melody a little bit. We're gonna force the song to feel stronger where it generally feels weaker. In, in every time signature in every song, certain beats naturally feel stronger. That's just the way that the music is created 
what we're trying to do is we're trying to force the feeling on a weak beat to feel stronger. That beat naturally on its own, where it is in the song, is not a strong beat. It's, it's an unimportant beat. But we're going to force extra importance on that beat by syncopating it. It's kind of hard to describe. I think it's easier to just hear it, and you can tell the difference, especially since we've played Happy Birthday probably 25, 30 times at this point. You're definitely going to hear the difference in the melody now that it's syncopated. So let me show you just a little idea of what I mean. Do you hear at the beginning of every beat, that first beat is kind of fast and moves quickly to another note? Right there, here, here, right there. That's the syncopated. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep that boogie bass, but we're kind of giving extra emphasis on notes that generally don't have that emphasis. Let's give it a try. Here we go. Syncopated melody. notice that each stylizing is getting just a little harder than the first one. That's kind of on purpose. It's part of my evil plan. Let's do that one again, the syncopated melody, because that's going to build on the next and last stylizing that we do. So I want you to feel fairly confident with that syncopation. Here we go. Are you ready for the last one? We're going to get a little bluesy. This is for the person in your life that's not so excited about their birthday. And you can still play them happy birthday, just a little bluesy. To figure out what we're going to do with this bluesiness, we need to go back and look at our boogie bass. We took a note out of the chord. What was the note we removed? We kept the bottom note and we kept the top note. We removed the middle note. Find that middle note. C chord, what would be your middle note? It would be an E. Play that in your right hand. Now play the black key below that middle note. That would be an E flat. Let's add that to the boogie bass. Let's go back and forth between the E and the E flat, mixing it with that boogie bass. So here we have it with the E and then the E flat. That's a little bluesy. Check out your G chord. What was the note you got rid of? We kept the G, the bottom note. We kept the D, the top note. We got rid of that middle note, the B. Find the B in your right hand. And we're going to go to the B flat or the black key below it. I know that I said we would only be playing white keys, which is true. But when you go a little bluesy, you got to add some black keys. So we're going to go back and forth with that boogie bass with the B to the B flat. Here we go. And then last chord, F chord. We, re we retained the F and the C. We got rid of the A. Find the A in the right hand. And then you're going to play the black key below it. That would be an A flat. And go back and forth between those two. There you go. You're going to want to get comfortable going back and forth between that E to E flat, A to A flat, B to B flat with the boogie bass. So just go back and forth a couple times. Make some weird noise. Now you're ready to actually put that in there. What we're going to do here is we're going to maintain that syncopated melody, maintain that boogie bass. But anywhere your melody kind of dances around an E, an A, or a B, kind of close in those areas, you're going to be dancing around through that E flat, A flat, and B flat. It's not an exact science. Um, you're just kind of messing around in there and see how it sounds. So if your melody is close to an E, close to an A, or close to a B, you're just kind of altering the melody a little bit. This is definitely, of the five stylizings, the hardest one. Because it has um, a little more open concept. Um, 
I didn't tell you exactly where to do it. I just said, kind of when your melody is sort of close in the neighborhood, add this in there. Something sort of like this. bluesiness. Did you make it? Did you make it through all of them? Just one of them? Could you waltz? Could you do a walking bass? Did you just make it through playing it with the chords blocked? Or maybe you just made it through the melody. Whatever you made it through, that's awesome. You did something today that you haven't done before or haven't been able to do before. You went outside your comfort zone and tried something new. And isn't that kind of the point in the first place we're trying a new instrument we're pushing ourselves beyond our comfort zone we're tapping into creativity and expression that's that's what it's all about and hopefully you had fun doing it take some of these ideas and create your own styling or throw these ideas out the window and come up with your own ideas and style happy birthday in a different way i would love to hear what you come up with thanks for taking the time to practice with me if you enjoyed this video practice session, please subscribe. Click the bell icon to receive notification when new content is released. I hope to see you in the next session. I leave you with inspiration from Oscar Wilde. To quote one of his characters from The Importance of Being Earnest, I do not play accurately. Anyone can play accurately, but I play with wonderful expression. Now go play with wonderful expression. The concepts in this video practice are not original to me. They are from Forrest Kinney's book entitled Birthday Variations. Are you ready for some fun? Wow, that was terrible. Why am I stuck on this? That was terrible. I started syncopating. And you will say, can I play happy birthday? Are you classy? I can't get, I can't get my boostiness going. Ah, ah. You might just get asked to play happy birthday. Please subscribe. Ah, wait, subscribe is up or down. Click the bell icon and please subscribe. <laughs> please subscribe. Do this. Please sub <laughs> Where is the subscribe? Where am I pointing? Please subscribe. Session, please subscribe. Click the bell. Subscribe. Click the bell eye contact. The bell eye contact. It's really screwing me up. I'm good. No. How's that? Okay.